Welcome back to the vlog. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP, photographer, gaffer with a one-ton grip van full of aperture lighting. If you need help on your next shoot, drop me an email. On this episode, we're going to feature two shoots, one where I brought it all and the second one where I came in as G&E. So on this shoot, I brought camera, audio, and lighting. The whole van was packed with a lot of goodies. You'll see the loadout uh, after I show the BTS of this setup and the actual footage from this shoot so you can see how it looks coming out of the two FX6s. Right here we have a big source coming in. We're trying to match those windows or uh, garage doors in the background that are bringing in light. So we're trying to match those. We didn't wanna put the talent where the light was actually coming through there because that was changing throughout the interview. But we were able to make a big source that was nice and soft. I did bring out my director's monitor, which was my Sumo, which was great for the director right there. That's Emmett, the director. And you can see he can switch between the cameras and get a nice clean image. The LUT's already applied. And we're pounding a 1200D straight through the diffusion. So we had it almost, I think we had it on max output. We were pushing it really hard because we were diffusing it twice and we really needed that output. So here's a little break we took. We were waiting on something, uh, questions were getting lined up and I just wanted to capture some footage and show everyone how everything looked. And you could see these frames are beautiful. We uh, were able to come in with our big 1200D source. I know I'm showing it again. This is a different clip, but it made it real simple to use the 150 dome and then, you know, the diffusion. I did quarter grid on it. We have the bounce here and then we have these overhead lights, which were really strong. So we put this frame up above the talent to prevent those from catching the edge. And you can see these windows here are huge the garage doors with windows we ended up putting a f22c to give them a hair light but also to light his shoulders a little bit and you'll see that in the shot with his darker hair his dark shirt and darker complexion we really needed a lot of output and the tubes that i normally use wouldn't have cut it so i know these uh, f22c's put out about 240 watts of output so it was really great for that and I'm showing false color here so you can see that we're not blowing out those uh, streaks of light coming in on the right hand side. So we're maintaining all our information there. We really like this wide setup, but man, was it tough to get all the equipment out of the shot. It was really close. So we were talking about inches of play. What was really cool too about the overhead is it helps make the audio better because it reduces echo and things like that. So sound guys hate it a lot of times because we try to bring um, diffusion down as much as we can. There's Emmett, our director, a real great guy. We had a good time. He knew what he wanted and we came together. So here's our wide shot. You can see how our hair light is hitting the guy's shoulder um, and hitting his hair and giving him a nice little glow. We wanted it even. We didn't want it to just come from one side because that whole um, arena or inside field did have lighting all the way around. So we wanted to kind of motivate it equally and didn't want to make it seem like it's only hitting him from one side. So that's why you see it on the left and the right shoulder. And like I said, we had a lot to contend with to um, fight the stands and everything out of the shots. But it ended up working out really well. And you can see that we have the light coming in from the windows and it's shown in this shot. And then when we come to this shot, it's visible there. So it kind of makes it a, a good transition. Uh, the lighting ended up being very beautiful from the 1200D and the 150 dome going through the quarter grid. You could see how soft it is on a skin and we we're able to get a little bit of a Rembrandt effect. And you could see that on his right cheek below his eye, he's getting a, a kiss of light. Then it goes to the shadow side, fill side. And over the top, you can see his hair has a nice hair light. This athlete was actually um, sweating because he was training beforehand. So I came in with my oil absorbing wipes, cleaned him up so he looks nice and fresh and it did an amazing job. So let's cut into the gear that I use for this shoot and look at my loadout. That cart needs to get into this van. It is really heavy. It has 11 C stands on it. 
all the gobo arms apple boxes it's heavy duty built and a bunch of other grip uh, miscellaneous things so i need to get it into the van this is a 10 foot ramp the longer it is the less steep it is i went with the 10 foot they fold in half and tuck in important thing is it can't handle my fatness and the weight of that together it's going to flex so what i did is the same system i used to build those carts i built a little piece that i take with me that supports the center so it's not flexing it's not moving i could jump up and down on it so that's really good another thing that happens is when you push up and you're pushing up you're kicking back to try to get the cart in you'll see a lot of motorcycle videos online where they're loading a motorcycle they hit the gas and it shoots the ramps out so what i did to alleviate that is i have this strap here you see that shift just a little bit it's cranked down to force the ramps this way not the opposite way so it's anchored to the van and it's supporting the ramps from getting kicked out so let's see if i could get it in one try it's been a minute since i've loaded this one in been doing a lot of stuff that doesn't require as much grip but we'll see what happens And that's it. So I'm gonna show you what happens when I kick out this support. Look at the flex on this. That's just me on it without that weight. And then if you remove this and you start pushing, pushing hard, soon enough you're gonna slide out. My shoes are sliding, I'm gonna destroy them, but you get the idea. We have our nine standard C stands and then two short ones which are silver and then we have gobo arms here and on the opposite side to match two full sets of apple boxes and then all the grip gear is just kind of thrown in there so we have clamps we have mafer clamps we have cardellinis we have um, adapters just a whole mix of things just piled into these blue bins We've got a ladder that slides in right up top and we're gonna load some more stuff in I've loaded two baby digitals and two combo digitals up top here down below here we have two full-size combos and then we have the large Avenger boom small Avenger boom and then a low boy combo stand for a director's monitor. So I've loaded in eight crates. Bottom left is hardware for my frames. Bottom right is XLRs, SDI, some V-mount batteries, miscellaneous. Then we have a 60, 600C Pro, 600D Pro. On the right, there's the ballast for them. Left, we have Stingers, top two or 300Ds, and then we have F22C, and there will be more. We've added a 1200D, a Atomos Sumo, and my MC kit right here. Probably gonna slide the MC kit over to the left. We are gonna have a hot shoot ahead of us in the Texas heat, 100 plus degree weather, so I decided to add an umbrella to a cart we're gonna be using today. This is a seven foot umbrella. You can see it's a little windy out, it's holding it fine. Once it has some more weight on it, it will be even better. But this will provide a lot of great shade. It does have the ability to tilt. You can see the wind catching it right now. It's holding up real well. It also has the ability to open up vents on the sides to allow a breeze to come through if needed. But should work out real well. The height is adjustable. I could go lower if needed. This is better than just a standard umbrella because you get a standard umbrella, you could see the shade is really off center. It's not straight down all the time, but the tilt function will play well into that as well. 
and I'm gonna click it into place and show it tilted. Now I've tilted it, you can see the wind's catching it a little bit. So that may not work as well if it's windy, but if it's not windy out, it should be fine. The umbrella has a base. You can see right here, this pull here comes down. It's actually designed to go into the ground. You could just kind of crank it into the sand, dirt, whatever, wherever you're at. And it's removable right here. In this position, if it just spins around, it's not gonna really do much or hurt anything. Gotta make a correction. It's actually an eight foot uh, span umbrella. And here it is, put in its bag, tucked away, and the base is still connected. Here's the umbrella in action. It's in the shade, but most of the time it was in the sun and it helped out a lot. We also brought a fan to cool us off right there. Also, the eight foot umbrella was able to be removed and used as a courtesy to keep the uh, DP, Chris Duncan, from overheating and having too much sun on them. Also, since we were shooting vertical, we were able to use it to cut light and prevent lens flares at times. So it came in real useful and it was easy to manage and handle um, compared to a regular floppy. So like I said, the DP of the shoot was Chris Duncan. He's a great guy who's shooting on a red Komodo. He knows his stuff. He does an amazing job. He sees things that normally uh, regular shooters may not see. He gets the angles and he is a pleasure to work with i love coming to shoots with chris oh there he goes he caught me in action so i had two eight by frames set up one was going to be a negative or a diffusion and the other one was going was an ultra bounce we only ended up using the ultra bounce so i'm packing that stuff away since we're losing the sun we have two big combos here that we're going to shoot up really high and have our novas on them to create some moonlight for a camping scene over here I have my two Novas and some Stingers and the hardware from the frames, which I'm going to be putting up. Everything's kind of a mess right now. We're just moving and grooving quickly, so I'm going to pack it away. These Aperture MCs are amazing. Anytime I have to load out or pack up in the dark, I pull these guys out, magnetize them to the van. There's one on each door and then two on the frame of the van up top and they light it up like crazy. I have a 12 piece kit. They wirelessly charge and make it so much easier when it's time to load out. There's so much visibility with them and you could just grab them and move them as needed. So when we finished in the dark here uh, at the end of the day, I was able to still pack things up and help them as they dump footage. A lot of questions I get relate to uh, grip equipment, stands, uh, frames, rags, things like that. And people want to know why I use certain things or the different options. So recently I captured a few shots of me explaining the stands that I have on my van as well as the different flags rags and diffusion so if you'd like to see that in the next episode me going in detail over those things let me know comment down below your feedback's important i'd love to hear from you and maybe in one of the next episodes i can go over some of the stuff i have in the van